is a miracle. There's really no other word for it. I was very, very grateful um, to have been one of the lucky ones that was taken out of a foster home and given a permanent home with two amazing parents that I love with every fiber of my being. Um, I love my family very much, but I've had a lot of questions. There's always been a hole in my heart and a piece of my mind that has questions. And I feel like it's the right time to find answers to those questions. I always knew that I was adopted. It was never anything that my parents wanted to hide from me. But information about who conceived me and who carried me for nine months was under lock and key for 27 years. until now. Inside this envelope are answers to some basic questions. I've only read it once in the last six months. Um, I'm like shaking. I'm gonna open it up again today. I'm like shaking right now. Sometimes people go, you know, like, oh, are you scared? The people I've talked to about this. Um, I'm not scared. Anxious, I guess, is the better word. Kind of sucks because unlike other people who were adopted, I have to really come out a second time. This time to complete strangers who don't know me, who don't know my heart, who don't know my relationship with God, who don't know my values. It's pretty scary, honestly. That part scares me. But I'd rather know answers than to live the rest of my life with these questions. Danny's birth mother was 31 years old at the time of his birth. According to our records, she is five, inch, five feet, two inches tall, with brown hair, blue eyes, and fair complexion, and weighs about 135 pounds. She is of Irish-German descent, with possibly some Native American descent. She's a member of the Protestant faith, but not an active participant. The birth mother is a high school graduate, attended college for two years and also business college. Her employment has been in clerical work and office management. 
she has a very pleasant personality. She's articulate and very capable about letting her personal goals and what her hopes were for the expected child. Her early childhood illnesses included colds, mumps, ear infections. She has no allergies, was never hospitalized except for her deliveries. She has no sensory or physical defects. The birth mother smokes, but does not use drugs or alcohol. Her mental and emotional health were excellent. Her hobbies were gardening, arts and crafts, and going to the beach with her friends and their children to have fun. She was divorced from her husband and the sole support of her nine-year-old daughter. Have a sister. Okay, I know you're probably like, what are you doing on the floor, Patrick? Today's been a rough day. Today was pretty rough. Um, pretty angry, honestly, pretty pissed off, if I may say so myself. Uh, called Catholic Social Services today and told them I wanted to go through the process with them, wanted to come to them first because that's who I was adopted through. Start talking about it. I get transferred to adoption department or whatever you want to call it. So get that lady on the phone. She essentially proceeds to tell me that they don't have anybody at Catholic Social Services today that's hired full time that does anything remotely dealing with finding or searching uh, for biological family members. They don't do that. They don't have anybody there. And that I would have to fill out all this paperwork and then they would reach out on my behalf and uh, see if uh, biological family is even alive or if they can even get in touch with them because they don't keep contact information up to date throughout the years. And that since there's nobody there that is hired full time to do this, uh, I could go ahead and send in a deposit with the paperwork so they wanted my money right away, uh, but I would not hear back anything for four to six months. Like four to six months is so long. Like what if she's sick? I don't wanna wait four to six months. I wanna know now. God. And then to not keep up to date contact information what, what do you expect that somebody lives in the same place, has the same phone number, has same address, has same name? Like, it's been 28 years. This woman could literally live in frickin' Australia. And I don't know. I think the thing that makes me even, like, more upset is the fact that, like, my entire life, I have been told that... I can go to them, they have the information, they have all the things, all the tools, the resources, everything in order to do this. They don't have anything. They don't have a file that they could give me. There's all just, it's just a mess, God. So I kind of lost my cool. And if any of you know me, that's not a good place to be, is on the receiving end of me being upset. <sighs> I proceeded to basically say to the woman that it is absolutely just insanity and so disgusting 
that this service that they have told me my entire life, that they told my parents, they told my entire family was available to me and to our family, turns out it's, it's not real. I told them that it was false advertising, that if they were going to market this as a part of why people should adopt through them, they should be honest about it. And I had no problem talking about this in this series. I told them I was filming the entire process and that unfortunately I would have to say that I would not tell anyone to adopt through Catholic Social Services ever. I also said the good relationship my family had with them ended the day that I went from foster care into my parents' arms. That was the end of the good relationship with them. Why? Because they have not done their due diligence in order to make this easy, accessible. And most of all, the fact that you want to take my money, but you don't want to give me anything for it for four to six months, that, if anybody asked you that, in any other space in the world, you would go scam. Not gonna do. Not gonna do that. If a contractor told you, "Pay me a bunch of money, but I'm not even gonna start on it for four to six months," you would go, "That's crazy. I'm not doing that." So, thankfully, I'm going home next week to see my family. And we're just like, fingers crossed, we're gonna meet with our family attorney and we can come up with some other like route to do this. Otherwise, we're gonna have to come up with a plan C. So, this is just a very draining process. Like I can't imagine like if, if, if and when we do find them, how emotionally taxing that's gonna be. But yeah, Catholic Social Services, I'll never deal with again. And I encourage all of you not to deal with them ever again either. Um, they are marketing and advertising a service in which they cannot provide, which is unethical, very unchristlike, and very unchristian-like, uh, and could potentially be illegal. I don't know. I'll have to look into that. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm very upset with them today. So, fingers crossed that next week... When I go home and see family, we can meet with our attorney and come up with another way to do this. Or maybe he can handle that. I don't know. Either way, we're gonna figure out a plan C. So, plan B, plan C, whatever the hell I gotta do. <sighs> I'm gonna have a, have a cocktail. Guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away. But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to gray As you fade away